out there in the internet world. Uh, this is Tom from Glam Metal, and we're here with our special guest, Gilby Clark. Gilby, how are you doing? Welcome I'm to doing Toronto. good, man. Thank you. Cool. Um, my first question I have for you is you're on a, uh, your second date on the Canadian tour yep. right now. Uh, why did you decide to go out for Canada? <laughs> well, actually, it's kind of funny how it worked out. Uh, I just uh, finished producing a band called Crash Kelly that's from here, and uh, their record was coming out, and they wanted to do some dates. So Sean called me and said, hey, would you be interested in doing some dates together? And um, we had been wanting to do some dates in the summer anyway, and it just kind of worked out where we just kind of put together two weeks of dates. And more than anything, you know, I mean, I'm not making any money on this. For me, it's just I, want, I need to play. You know, right, I like to right. play. And uh, we're having a good time so far. One right. show down. So we'll see what's up for tonight. Awesome. Uh, now you mentioned Crash Kelly. Uh, mm -hmm. We're big supporters of Crash Kelly here at Glam Metal. Yes. And... Uh, when, why did you pick, uh, or why did you decide to produce a band like Crash Kelly? What do you see in them, and, and, and how do you think you helped them? Well, um, Sean had contacted me. Actually, this is the second record I did. I did their uh, other record, and actually, this one only did half of their record. But uh, Sean had contacted me. He sent me the record that they had done before, and I liked it. You know, I mean, I'm a, you know, I, I like a lot of the 70s glam stuff. You know, like, I love Bowie. I love uh, T-Rex. You know, I, I like everybody. I like Slade. I, I just love that music. It was blues-based guitars, but with really great, catchy melodies, and mm -hmm. that's what I like. So when I heard his stuff, I thought it was very good. I think Sean's an excellent guitar player, so it's always fun to work with a talented guitar player. We can try out different guitars, different amps, and you know, really go for a good sound. So that's really what attracted me to them. Yeah, one of the things Sean was saying is that um, he had some really high-profile guest uh, artists on there that mm -hmm. you were able to help him out with. Um, yeah. He had uh, Rudy Sarzo. Yeah, Rudy. Actually, he called Rudy. I didn't call Rudy. Oh, yeah, he, okay. yeah, he called Rudy. Uh, he used uh, the drummer Brian Tishy, who normally plays in my band, but he's out with Billy Idol right now. Right. And uh, we used Brian on the record, and Brian's a great drummer. Um, the drummer he had on his last record he did with me actually did an excellent job too. But you know, I think Sean just wanted to try something different for some different inspiration. Mm -hmm. Now uh, you're, you're also producing a, um, a group from the '80s that was very famous in the '80s, The Alarm. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah how, how far have, have you finished that? Or are you in the process? It's done. Of it? It's done. Actually, yeah. The Alarm. I mixed the record. Um, the Alarm. I um, they had recorded most of the stuff in uh, England. And then um, Mike came over to L.A. and I mixed the whole record. Plus, we added stuff to it and all that. We changed parts around. Um, that was, for me, it was a dream come true because I think Mike is such a talented songwriter. He just writes such great, you know, hooks, and he's not afraid to try different subjects and stuff, too, with his lyrics. Mm -hmm. So I, I really had a great time with that record, and it sounds like a 1977, like, punk rock record at yeah. this point. It's mm -hmm. really, really good. Now, 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 when you produce, are you more, uh, you know, you listen to them and maybe throw in your two cents in that every now and then? Or are you a little more uh, active as far as, you know, writing songs? I do a little bit of both. Um, you know, it really depends on the project. My, my goal as a producer is that none of the records I produce sound the same. And to me, that's what a producer does, was, is ca ca excuse me, captures what's best about the band. You know, I don't want them all to sound like my records, and I don't, you know, I want them to sound like themselves. My job as a producer is to basically be that fifth member or sixth member, whatever the extra person is, to come up with the ideas that they don't think of. Right. And that's what I like to do. And I always say, you know, it's really their final say. Like with Sean, if we're working out parts or, you know, arrangements and stuff, I say, you know, in the end it's your final say. You're going to listen to the record a lot more than I am. You know, but I just want to give him a bunch of ideas that he wouldn't think of, you know, and that, therefore we're bringing something new to it. Okay. So I do go back and forth. Sometimes, you know, I'm co-writing. I do a lot of co-writing that I don't take credit for because sometimes, you know, I, I don't like to get into that mess. You know, it's right. like, you know, let's just get the songs good and, and, and sounding punchy. Right. Now, with all this uh, uh, producing you're doing, do you have any, have you had any time to write any stuff for yourself? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> that is one problem about mm. all this. Uh, yeah, because I've actually done, I think since uh, when Supernova ended, like, at, towards the middle of last year, and... Uh, my goal was to start writing some new songs and start making a record, but then in the summer I started going on a tear. I had like, I did the Crash Kelly record, the Silent Rage record, the Alarm record, and another band called Motor Christ. I just finished their full record from start to bottom. Um, so no, I haven't had any time to write any songs, but that was another reason why I really wanted to do this tour, was I really want to start working out ideas during sound checks. Mm -hmm. 
Um, can you tell me a bit about the band that you have right now? Um, this is a little bit different of a band for me. Um, Muddy's playing bass and singing too, and uh, Muddy's played in my band quite a few times, mm -hmm. but uh, Dennis Morehouse is playing drums, who him and Muddy just finished the Mark Ford tour, which they oh, all right, last right. year they, they right, did a yeah. tour together. So it was really nice to have a, a rhythm section that really is a rhythm section. These guys have been playing together for a long time. They really work things out where all I get to do is, you know, play guitar and, and sing, you know, so it's, uh, it's been fun. Yeah, now, now you uh, mentioned this, this uh, Rockstar Supernova project. Mm -hmm. That was uh, that was an incredibly high-profile project yeah. for you. Yeah, that was um, a weird one. <laughs> yeah. How did you, um, you know, I, I don't even remember reading how you got involved in that. How, how did you? Well, I got to tell you, it's actually a, a, it's, it's a strange story. I got the gig first. Uh, basically what happened was uh, I auditioned for the band last year. When it was, um, wait, let me do this again. I auditioned as the band when it was going to be in excess. Okay. Um, and they were going to have like an all-star lineup for that band, and so I went in with uh, myself. Uh, I had Johnny Colt on bass and Steve Gorman on drums and Dizzy playing keyboards and my wow. friend Ryan and I both played guitar and sang. And from that. The producers were, they were already married to the In Excess idea. That was already happening. But they were watching our band going, you know, what if you started a new band? You know? And so when the next year came along, I got a call from Mark. And Mark and I started talking about it. He said, you know, if you had to put together your dream band, who would be in the band? And Tommy was on the list. So as soon as Tommy came in, then it became Tommy's band. <laughs> Tommy kind of took over, you know? Right. And uh, so when we were, Tommy and I were talking about bass players, you know, Jason's name was the first one on the list, and thank God, you know, he was available. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of wild how it happened. It's like, you know, it, you can say, yeah, it was made for TV, but it was also, you know, our we really wanted a new band more yeah. than anything. Like, it, as soon as Tommy and I started talking, whether there was a TV show or not, we would have had a new band, you know. Right. So it was uh, just something that had never been done before. And we were both excited about trying some new music. Yeah. yeah. Are, are you happy the way that it ultimately turned out? I mean, no, I'm not happy how it turned out. You know, um, but you know, it's it, like I said, it was something different. So we didn't really know how it was going to turn out. You know, we were really it, it, trying something new. And anytime you put four person strong personalities in a band, you know, you're going to have some issues and yeah. stuff. I mean. In the end, it all turned out fine because now we all get along great. We're all still friends and everything, but you know, I don't really know if there's any future for the band right. at this point. But now you guys just got just reunited for a gig. We did <laughs> last week. <laughs> I didn't even know. I mean, that was kind of funny that that happened. Tommy just called and said, "I'm doing this uh, uh, benefit concert for the Greek Theater, and uh, it was a really great cause." So we all got together and played a couple songs. And we had such a great time. It was such a good time seeing everybody. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's really weird. It's like the band never really broke up. We just kind of stopped doing shows, you know? Right, yeah. And it's like we had no problems. Everybody got along fine. You know? Now, I, I saw that, that tour when it played Shades in Buffalo, and I was, like, shocked at the production. <laughs> no, I know, like, yeah, that's Tommy. <laughs> a multi-million-dollar, like, like, light oh, show and everything. Yeah. Well, it wasn't that much money. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a pretty big... It was pretty incredible. Show. It really was, you know? That's the thing is, uh, that's one of Tommy's great qualities is, you know, when people give Tommy a hard time about actually not being a true artist. He really is an artist in, in all different facets, you know. It's like he's involved in, you know, with the, with the production and stage design and things like that. I gotta tell you, if it was me that was running the band, I wouldn't have gone that big on the lighting and stuff, you know. So it was really nice to have that big production, because I gotta tell you, I really liked it. I, well, the bands I came from, like G and R and MC Five, something you know, they, they don't do stuff like that. It's all right, you know, yeah, music. So it was a, a nice change. Kind of, kind of like what, what you're doing today, kind of stripped down, stripped down, just raw rock and, rock and roll, man. Right.